I wanted to bring you a video that is going to give you a step-by-step -step tutorial how to get to the East Cut. East Coast roads, a road we'll never find in memories made from trails we left behind along the way. I know these roads will lead us home. Hey guys, Robert here with Coastal GX. We're out here at South Padre Island, as you can tell, right? got the infamous South Padre Island sign and right over here we have the Port Isabella as you can see that all right now <clears throat> let me tell you the reason why I wanted to do this video I wanted to bring you a step-by-step -step tutorial how to get to the East Cut a lot of folks especially folks from out of town have been reaching out to me and saying hey man you know where, where do I gas up where where do I go in how many miles to get to the East Cut? Well, um, hopefully I'll be able to answer some of these questions. I'm gonna go step by step, put the counter on the mile counter to zero, and I'm gonna see how many miles exactly it is to the end of the island. And I'm also gonna tell you some very key, very important little information bits at the end of the video. So hopefully you'll stick around until then. I really hope that you find this information useful and uh so for now come ride shotgun with me i'll take you to the east cut before we keep moving i'm going to tell you it is important to fuel up you want to fuel up top off your vehicle just in case remember i mean it's if you're going to be going up and down up and down up and down you might want to consider uh, fueling up because obviously there are no gas stations out there you know beyond this point uh, we're still on Padre Boulevard okay so you can choose one of these many uh, uh, gas stations and uh, go ahead and just uh, top off and continue to go let's continue our journey hey son what's up do you have a few uh, extra bucks no, man, you, you need to get some money from the ATM or something. I have zero cash. Okay, okay. Yeah. Ten more. Ten. Okay, bye. Bye. That was my son, guys. Talking, asking me, hey, dad, do you have any... Are you one of the... Do you have some extra bucks? Uh, meaning cash. Do I have cash? Because there is, there is a, a cost to enter Beach Axis 6, which is where we're heading. They do not accept the debit card, so if there's somebody there in the front, they're going to be asking for cash. But I'm about to show you right now how you can avoid all that hassle. If you plan on coming here often, let me show you where we can go and you could just pay for one time fee, probably save some money. And uh, just like me, I, I still have my valid pass, my yearly pass, but I'm going to show you exactly where you need to go in order to take care of that. Yeah, friends, so just to let you know where this place is at, for reference, on the left-hand side, which is the bay side, uh, you'll see the birding center over here, birding and nature center. Uh, and then just a few yards forward, a few yards ahead, will be able to come in. I, I, let me see what beach axis. I keep forgetting the actual name of it. It's Andy Bowie Park, actually. But you can come in here and let's go see if they are open. But you will be coming in here and you can get your yearly pass right at this location, right here. They have the fees, they have all that good stuff. Hi there. Hello. Question for you. Okay. When somebody goes in, I have my yearly pass. Is it still, has it changed the fee, uh, changed at all? You have to do the $2 for the trash program. So you need to just have your pass with the $2. The pass with the $2. But otherwise, if you go to the Beach Axis, like let's say you go to Beach Axis 6, you have to pay how much uh, cash? If you go to Beach Texas 6, it's $2 with your pass. 
$14 cash with your pass. Okay. If you do not have your annual pass, then you need to have $14 cash. $14 cash, no debit. So you. I was like, I don't know where you want them to swipe it. Uh, you hear it? <laughs> uh, like, there is no internet up there. It's like, give them a card. I don't know where you want the boys to swipe it. I, I, I've been there. So, <laughs> no swiping at the entrance, guys. All right? Just cash. Just all right. Cash out at Beach Access 5 and 6. Cameron County, Beach Access 5 and 6. Cameron County, Beach Access 5 and 6. It is a good value, especially if you're a local, to get the yearly pass, wouldn't it be? Yeah. Yes, if you like to frequent the. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you come once a month, that's you know 120 bucks. Yeah. Once a month, the whole year is 120 bucks. The yearly pass is 100 bucks. You're saving 20 bucks. Beautiful. It's already it's a, it's a simple path. You take care of yourself. You're very welcome. Th but that first stop sign, there's a little turnaround, and if you're heading up north, just keep going another mile and a half. Thank you. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, friends. So now that we already got. Now that you got your pass, you got all that good stuff out of the way, you know, if you decided to get your yearly pass, like I said, you don't have to do that there. If you're just gonna come here, you know, one one weekend and you're gonna be here, you, you're not gonna come back until like three months later or until the following year, it's not worth getting the yearly pass, obviously, you know, but I'm gonna show you what you can expect. So here we are, if we look forward here, You'll notice that you have all this sand. Sometimes the sand from the dunes will bleed on over to the to the highway. It looks pretty good right now, but if we had a storm or we had some powerful winds, strong winds, you can expect a lot of the sand sometimes to cover part of the roadway. So just be mindful. You know, you got some people that might be coming back from the island and they might be tired or hell might, might be even under the influence so please you know mind your speed limit you know even if you have to go enjoy the surroundings the scenery and uh just take it easy when you're driving up here so beach access six is going to be the very last entrance to south padre island okay we're heading north right now okay along highway 100 because this is an extension of highway 100 and uh or it still continues and uh, so let's get to Beach Axis 6. That's where we're gonna go ahead and turn in. So it's kind of late in the morning, it's 1045, and you can already see it is summertime, it is a busy season, and the line is already starting to accumulate. Uh, normally I would be here much earlier, and you won't see anyone out here. And then a little pro tip, if you get here, super early in the morning you can even avoid paying the fee <laughs> to the entrance because they usually don't have an attendant there so if there's nobody at the attending you know uh, there at that location I mean if there's nobody taking your money then you could just come on in okay it's not a big deal Hey, Nacho. Hey, do you know they're charging right now at the gate? Yeah, they're, they're charging money at the gate, yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah, it's open. Uh, we're, we're, we're literally about to go in. Hello? Okay, guys, so I have my permit ready and my $2. Like this. hey, how you doing, Robert? Two bucks, and I uh, still have my yearly pass. And what they do in return, they will give you a little receipt, and they'll give you a trash bag. If you fill up the trash bag, which you should, then bring it back to them, and they'll give you back your two dollars. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Welcome to South Padre Island. This is it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull over here uh, because I'm waiting for my son to catch up. So I'm just gonna park it right here and I'm gonna take advantage of this time and I'm gonna show you 
what I choose to do, you don't have to do this, but this is what I like to do when I come in here, all right? Okay, friends, so what I like to do, you don't have to do this, you know, hey, gotta say hello to the cops right there. What I like to do is deflate my tires. You don't have to do this, you know, sometimes, like right now, you can tell that it was extreme high tide because you could see the puddles of water way up here, but uh, it's already receded. There's hard, compact sand. You don't need to do this, but if you plan on going on softer sand, for some reason, you're gonna be staying here for a while. You don't know, you're, you're expecting different changes or whatever. It's probably a good idea to lower the pressure of your tires. Another thing that you can do that it's good for, improves your ride a lot, okay? It softens up the tires, it becomes more malleable, it's a lot better. And of course, if there's anything that can puncture your tire, you might get saved because the tire's a little softer, so it's a little more squishy. So it might, you might avoid, you know, a puncture that's unnecessary. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now these are already calibrated. I personally like to lower them like about 14, 15 PSI, but you can do whatever you want. So I wanted to show you something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zero the odometer here. I'm gonna start fresh at zero miles and then we're gonna we're gonna see you know exactly how many miles it's gonna to take to reach the east cut so we are right at the entrance of beach axis 6 so this should be a pretty accurate representation we are heading north right here along the South Padre Island shoreline I want I wanted to share some stuff with you so once you get to a certain point out here, depends on your carrier, but more than likely you're going to lose signal. So if you're traveling with someone, you can have like your little walkie talkies. That'll be good enough. If you have like your simple Midland, you know, handheld walkies and then you need to communicate with each other. You can still do that. Uh, I wanted to tell you um, about law enforcement and uh, some of the you know, uh, speed limits around here. You might be surprised, but this is an extension of the county. So you can get a traffic ticket for speeding out here. So if you ask me, what is the speed limit? It's 15 miles an hour. Some places it's 10, 15, 20, 25. It depends on a lot of things. So <laughs> it depends on where you're traveling it depends on what season it is so if it's turtle season some of these higher speed limit areas might have to come down uh the closer you get to beach axis six entrance just the rule of thumb is just stay slow okay keep it slow especially especially when there's lots of crowds when there's lots of people if you're making your way out at night during the summer or during a holiday weekend it's extremely important to keep it super slow because children people are parked out here and this has been tradition for the longest time where people just you know park near the beach and they just run to the water and so the children are going back and forth back and forth back and forth uh, you, you don't you don't want to put yourself in a bad situation you know where you might hurt a child by accident okay so you know, keep it, keep it, uh, keep it slow. Be mindful of the speed limits, and avoid getting a traffic ticket and hurting someone as well. All right. So let's continue. Sammy, do you want to show them a little bit of what we're looking at here? Yeah. Everybody, as you can see, uh, yeah, children running to. You have children running over to the water and uh, you have large congregations of of people over here you know um, you know hanging out those folks have horses right there so you know they're gonna make it a, a weekend event have a good time but this is all gonna get super crowded as the day progresses it's a Saturday 
so it's the busiest time why do I love going to the East Cut yes it's more of a pain in the butt you're gonna waste more gas it's further the risk all that other stuff but I, I, I personally enjoy a little bit of isolation um, I, I like to I like some peace and quiet you know maybe the tunes that someone else is playing are not the tunes that I enjoy you know so I would rather just you know uh, keep to myself over there maybe take a nap do a little fishing do a little cooking you know just have a good time also be mindful of vendors uh, yeah I don't think there's a watermelon farm around here I'm pretty sure this gentleman is selling his uh, his uh, what do you call it he's selling his his uh, watermelons out here for the families so let's continue oh you see the you see the pools of water over here uh, yeah that's from the high tide that was here so obviously we're in low tide mode right now that's why it's super easy to drive uh, some folks will say oh I can make it in a two-wheel drive absolutely yeah you know if it's nice if it's clear if everything is perfect yes but the weather can change all right and if you're not paying attention to the tides you can get yourself in trouble you know and uh, you know there is a difference between driving here and then driving way up there and the water when the tide comes in it does reach at times all the way to those dunes that's why you see them forming over there as well you know the water will push all the way up all right and along with it it brings what it brings debris so yeah you, you don't know what you're running over uh, especially in the soft sand you know somebody can leave you know a broken bottle you know sharp objects and these can uh, really ruin your day you know when you're driving your when you're driving your, your vehicle on the sand. Guys, I'm gonna mention something about uh, the mile markers and the uh, UFO and stuff like that. Stand by. Okay, friends, so I made an observation here. So I wanted to tell you about these mile markers that you're gonna be encountering when you're out here. As you can see here, it says uh, uh, six. It's got a six there. That's an actual mile marker. And of course, it's got a sea, a sea turtle. Please report it. You know, every, the island is big on sea turtles. Wildlife in general want to, you know, conserve, you know, Mother Nature and, and wildlife out here. So, yeah, there's a way of communicating there. Of course, you're going to have to wait because I don't think you're going to get signal out here. Um, however, let me show you something my odometer it says six miles up there but remember i zeroed my my counter and it's at 5.4 miles on my odometer and on my trip odometer and it's mile marker six over here so i don't know where exactly they're measuring obviously they're measuring a little bit further south from the entrance or i don't know what or maybe unless there's something wrong with the calibration on my odometer uh also just for reference, you will see the UFO over here. This is where we're at. We're at mile marker six right now. We're gonna continue. The journey is the, yeah, whole thing. the whole thing, you know. It's not the destination, it's yeah. when you get there, man. Guys, so meeting here up with a friend, old friend, but I got to tell you, part of the fun of going to the East Cut is stopping, you know, go ahead and say hello to your friends, have a conversation with people. You'll meet the most interesting folks out here. Uh, yeah, that's part of it. All right, let's continue with our, uh, our journey. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, brother. I seen you again, Good man. Good here, Rodney. <laughs> we just hit 20 miles on the odometer, and we can already barely start seeing 
way over there in the horizon, we can start seeing the jetties. It is a very clear day. It's an absolutely gorgeous day out here. So visibility, you can see for a long, long while. So we're very close to getting to the east cut and it's been smooth sailing. I would, I would even tell you that right now in these conditions, a two wheel drive vehicle could easily make it out here. Okay, the way it is right now. So lower, deflating the tires in this case, just for driving along the beach, just like this, no issue. However, if I was, and I do this once in a while, somebody's stuck somewhere, it, it is a benefit to me. So I deflated, period. Okay, and like I said, it helps with so many other things. But anyway, let's get back to the East Cut. Okay guys, so we made it out to the East Cut, as you can see, 22.8 miles and just about an hour doing the speed limit. We're doing 15, 20 miles an hour all the way up here. Yes, we did stop once or twice to smell the roses, and, uh, but now we made it out here. So I promised you, extra little tidbits, a little bit of extra information when you're getting out here. Number one, okay? Just make sure, remember, you are isolated most of the time. Yes, right now, there's a lot of folks over here. And uh, so if something bad happens to you where your, your I don't know, your battery is going to fail you, you know, you can, you should be self relying upon yourself. Bring a, a, one of those little battery charger thingies. Try to do something to help yourself if you can, okay? Remember that your standard jack, if you get a flat tire out here, that standard jack might not help you out, okay? So I have recovery boards, I use those. I, I, thank God I've never, <laughs> knock on wood, right? I've never had a flat tire out here, but if I would, and I've helped other people, we've used the Max Tracks in the past to kind of serve as the base because your jack will sink into the sand. Other things that we did not mention, uh, your your vehicle itself okay you want to protect it so make sure that you use some sort of lanolin based oil uh, if you can come over here let me show you you're gonna see that it's a little slick a little kind of a little oily that's because I put a fresh coat on all the metal surfaces of the vehicle that's including underneath the vehicle all of this has it looks a little shiny it's not armor all it is actually a surface shield that I used and uh, my son did it as well on his truck. This is just, you see all this oily stuff right here, it's shiny, okay? It serves as a nice little barrier between the salt water, okay? And even though you're like, oh, I'm not gonna get it in the salt water, I'm not gonna go into the, no, 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 no. If you're driving along the hard packed sand, that moisture that is gonna kick up, it's gonna go into the metal and trust me, it's gonna find the, finest little pores, any little breach in the metal surface of your vehicle, and it is gonna start rusting out your vehicle. So make sure that you take care of that. Uh, anything else I can tell you, you uh, are encountering limited to no law enforcement out here. So if you're gonna be camping overnight, or like I do for several days on, in a row, remember that you have to be careful when you're out here, uh, be mindful, uh, there can be some sort of uh, weird activity out here sometimes, okay? So uh, I don't know if you believe in the Second Amendment, you want to you know, protect yourself, protect your family. That's certainly allowed out here, all right? You know, but other stuff like radio communication, first aid kit, anything like that. And of course, probably the most simplest things, you know, just use some protection, okay? use uh, some sort of uh, sunscreen on yourself. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped you out. Remember 22.8 miles, that's what we clocked on the odometer and about an hour doing the speed limit out here. All right, catch you later.